Good morning to you and uh, you, Mikel. I uh, hope yeah. you're doing well after the weekend's victory in the Cup. Listen, with your team in such good form at the moment, how much are you looking forward to getting back into Premier League action this week? Yes, there's a lot of games coming up now, so important ones as well. Um, we need to get uh, our home for established. Uh, we have some issues there. And now we just started to get some wins. Um, we've got two at home right now uh, that are going to be key for the future in the season in our Premier League. And uh, yeah, the team is in good spirits. Obviously, after four wins, everything looks uh, better and uh, looking forward to the games. Emil Smith-Rowe played such a key part again in that game uh, at the weekend. How much has he impressed you in that number 10 role? And do you think his performances are perhaps sending a message to some of the other more senior players about the levels that you are looking for? Well, I, I've been impressed with his performance and um, the capacity that he's shown to do it uh, in consecutive games, which normally with uh, young players is not something uh, very common. Uh, the other day he came in the game when we needed uh, different energy and a threat in the box and he exactly did what we expected and he scored the goal which is something that we've been talking uh, to him but uh, there is no messages to any senior players here is a squad of players with different profiles and everybody has to be pushing each other trying to make each other better and everybody contributes in in different ways because every player's role is is different in the squad Crystal Palace, they'll be coming to you uh, with just the one win in their last six in the Premier League. So what are you expecting of them? That uh, they are a really dangerous side and they show that against the big teams. Um, they are really compact and an organised team. And the Roy, you know what you're going to expect. Um, they have players with uh, a big individual talent that uh, they just need moments uh, to win games, to create actions that can unbalance the game. Uh, so we have to be very careful with that. And then we have to play to be dominant again in the game, um, to go from the first minute to try to win the game, to attack them and be cautious as well as the strengths that they have to try to control them as much as possible. Finally, from me, 11th in the table now, so looking much better than it was, but how important is it to beat Crystal Palace, just to further add some distance between Arsenal and those teams like Palace that are further below them in the table? Yes, again, uh, and to keep uh, having that consistency and that belief that we can go into every game, uh, having the feeling that we're going to win it. And the more games we are able to win in a truck, um, the better that, that feeling is going to be. And obviously, to start thinking more about uh, the table in a different direction, uh, you are able to win those matches. Obviously, your mind starts to look in a much more positive way. All right. Good luck on Thursday. Have a good week. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. We'll move to Sky Sports and Gail Davis. Morning. Um, can I just start by running through some injury news? Um, Gabrielle Martinelli is probably the, the most important, but also Gabrielle and Thomas Partey. Um, can you start with um, Martinelli? How, how bad is that ankle? Well, we don't know how bad it is. Uh, he's getting a scan this morning. Um, he didn't look up after the game because he was in a lot of pain. But yesterday he tested a little bit better. So let's hope uh, that uh, we have a scan today. It's not as serious and, uh, and we can have Gabby back uh, really soon. But uh, we'll know more tomorrow, certainly. Um, and Gabriel and Thomas party as well. Well, Gabby had a training session the other day. Um, he tested positive. Uh, he had very mild symptoms, so he's uh, missed uh, a few weeks of training because he had to be isolated. He's better now. We expect him to be training with us in the next couple of days and make an assessment uh, whether we can have him or not on Thursday. And Thomas has been in full training for the last uh, four or five days. Uh, he's completely asymptomatic. He was a little bit rushed um, to try to play him against Newcastle, but I think he will be ready for Thursday. We saw on the weekend, didn't we, um, uh, a lot of celebrations despite those kind of Premier League um, new protocols that were that have been in place. I mean, we were talking about it. how hard is it to, to change that as a player, first of all, in terms of, you know, it's an instinct, isn't it? You, you want to go and hug your people. And second of all, how are you one of the managers that are 
very worried morally to, to carry on playing this game, given the high numbers we're seeing and the, the sort of um, things that we're experiencing and hearing from, from hospitals. I mean, London, for example, it's, um, it, it's, there's a major incident being called. Well, um, with the first question, first of all, yeah, to control the emotions when you're going 200 miles an hour in a game um, full of things happening around you is very difficult to control. Uh, we're asking our players in, in corners, for example, to be man-marking people, to be pushing people around, and then we cannot fist bump anybody, you cannot say hello to anybody. It gets a little bit... Uh, controversial and difficult to understand. Uh, morally, with the situation that we have in the country, with the situation we have worldwide, to keep doing what we are doing, um, it's a little bit of a strange feeling. Um, but we know as well what we can bring to the society. If we are able to do it in a safe way, and there are a lot of positives to take. It's just that balance that when this starts to get damaging, and, um, and worrying and start to exploit people. And when we can do it, when we are still safe and we can, as I said, add something to positive to this uh, difficult context. And um, it wouldn't be a press conference if we didn't ask you about Ozil. Um, Fenerbet Bache is suggesting that his, he could be joining imminently. Ozil himself has tweeted that we'll know more about his future on a Q&A this evening or at some point this afternoon. What's your understanding of the latest situation, Mikhail? My understanding is nothing has changed uh, from the last uh, press conference. Um, that uh, Edu and the club are having some conversations about uh, the near future and the long-term future. And when we know something, um, we will announce it. Will you be tuning in to his uh, live Q&A then on Twitter to, to learn a bit more then this afternoon? I'm sorry, but I don't have Twitter. <laughs> I don't follow Twitter. Have you any idea what might be said in that? No. He's only in the past. Uh, it's something that uh, he tried to do to engage with his fans and keep everybody informed. So I'm not surprised. And just finally for me, Eddie Nketiah is, is another name that's been linked with a, a move away. Do you expect him to, to move on in January? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. We'll now move to BBC and George Cummings. Thanks, Dan. Um, Mikel, I know you were talking about um, playing on. I, I think football's a big relief for people at the moment in lockdown, isn't it? That's why it sort of needs to carry on in a way. But as you say, it's safe because, you know, there's not much else to do if everyone's stuck in their houses. No, but that's why all the protocols and guidance and everything that we are told to try to keep uh, the industry going is, is really helpful. Uh, I think so far, till the last week or so, uh, we did uh, brilliantly um, and we were able to control that. If that's the case and the government and the people are happy to do that again, because they believe that is uh, something positive and something to look at and keep people entertained, um, it's great if we can help in that sense. And, and if not, it will be them the ones making that decision that uh, is no sense keeping this going. Um, Martinelli, I think he's had three injuries, I mean, a couple in recent weeks. Is he, is he unfortunately going to be an injury-prone player or is this just a bit of bad luck with what he's going through through this 12 months? Well, he had a really bad luck, the three injuries that you're talking, they're all really different. One, it was a, a contact, the other one, that is something that can happen to anyone, but you have to be really unlucky. Hopefully, we're going to scan him today. Hopefully, it's not that bad and we can have Gabby back but uh, yeah, I was got it for him because he was um, he was in pain and, and he was got it. Um, has Rob Holding signed a new contract at the club? It's what something he... that we will announce uh, as quick as we can, but um, looks like it. Um, and I just wondered, it's a, it's a light-hearted one, really. Have you heard um, Emil Smith Rowe's new nickname? What the Arsenal fans are calling him? They're calling him the Croydon De Bruyne. I just wondered what was your <laughs> thoughts on that. <laughs> Colin, Emil, let's keep it simple. It's just the start as a lot to do. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, George. We have to talk sports and Ian Abrahams. Hi, Mikhail. How are you? Hello. Thank you. Um, I just want to ask you one thing about um, 
Mesut Ozil, because it does look like he's leaving. Um, how well do you think, as personally, he's handled the last six to nine months? Because from afar, it doesn't look like he's necessarily handled it in the best way. Well, it's, it's always difficult to handle this situation when you are left out of the squad. Um, it's been difficult for everybody and to have uh, players in that squad. It wasn't only him because you need them motivated. You need them training well. You need them being part of what we are trying to do. And, and when they don't feel like they can contribute to that, it's always, it's always tricky. We have tried to manage that the best possible way. Um, you said earlier that Crystal Palace, if anyone won in six, was still a hard team to beat. Yet yeah, it does seem to be mounting pressure on Roy Hodgson. Um, they're not maybe the team they were that have come to the Emirates in the last two or three years and, and really caused Arsenal problems. Yes, because they are a team that, uh, as I said before, they don't need much. Uh, they have very specific plays in certain positions um, that reinforces that way of playing. And Roy makes things always difficult. They lost some games, some that deserve it, some that they lost uh, for big margin, like against Liverpool. But um, for me, it's not um, a real uh, consequence of what they are as a team. Listen, uh, every game in the Premier League is tough. It will be tough against them when a team is in the moment that they are in, because we weren't that far uh, a few weeks ago. I know what the spirit in that dressing room and the willingness to put things right is. So um, we have to be there really, really ready to go and, and win that match again. As you rightly say, a month ago, you were looking more towards the bottom six in the table. Now, top six, I mean, is that back on in terms of a realistic aim for, for Arsenal? I think that the next two games are crucial uh, to see the direction that uh, we are taking to reinforce all the things that uh, we have improved on, um, the resource that we are having recently, and um, we will know much more, I think, in the next two games. And just some transfer news to him with um, Lucas Torreira. What's happening with him? Well, I had some conversation with Lucas. He started the long period um, really well. Now he's lacking um, game time. It can happen. The team is doing exceptionally well. They are first in the in the Spanish La Liga. So when a team is winning, it's difficult to to get in the lineup. It's a long season. I know Lucas' character. He's going to try to to keep going and pushing. And um, and let's see what happens with him. And Emmy Brendy, you've been in with quite a bit with Norwich. I mean, he's a very skillful player. Uh, and Diego Costa, who's a free agent, you've also been linked with, with Diego Costa. Do you see him as being a, a traditional Arsenal number nine? I mean, I go back to the likes of Malcolm McDonald and Frank Stapleton, so he might be a little bit like them. <laughs> yeah, we get linked with players that uh, we haven't even discussed. So as you can imagine, they cannot go name my name. All right, good luck here. This is Crystal Palace, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Now to the Press Association and Mark Membrons. Morning, Mikel. Hello. Uh, you said last week you'd have you'd hope to have news on on Mesut Ozil's future in the, in the coming days. Just for your own sanity, now you must be keen for the situation to come to an end. No, is that uh, we can resolve the situation one way or the other. You know, it's always good to know what uh, we're going to do, what is going to happen. And um, I knew that when we made that decision. Uh, the consequences that we could have. Um, we still have to try to find the right solution for the player and for the club. And uh, we are trying to do that. And, and let's see what we get. He, he obviously hasn't played much, but he is a World Cup winner. Has he had an impact on the likes of Smith Rowe, Saka, Willock? And will, will that experience and history of winning things be missed from the squad if, he's, if he does move on? Well, I think uh, players' contribution comes in, in many different ways. Uh, when you look at people who has won everything and they are able to tell the, the stories about uh, why those things happened, uh, the experiences that they had, uh, the status that that brings into a football players, the confidence that it brings. It's great to have people around like this um, for young talent. Um, after, you have to experience it yourself and you have to look at players that... Uh, you can see uh, that can give you something for your career, but uh, certainly having that type of players is always helpful. Uh, Wilfred Zaha spoke last week about how close he came to joining Arsenal a couple of years ago. Would you have enjoyed working with, with a player of, of his talent? Sorry, I missed that, Mark. Sorry, uh, Wilfred Zaha spoke last week about how close he came to joining Arsenal before you, Ooh. before you were the manager. Ah, okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, I just wondered, would you? Have, enjoyed working with a player of his talent? 
Well, I, undoubtedly, he's a player that uh, is done exceptionally well in the Premier League. That he uh, has created a big name uh, because what he's been able to do, sometimes just on his own, <laughs> some individual actions. That is what uh, what the people highlight uh, most of the time. But uh, yeah, he's a player that is playing for Palace at the moment, and um, I have nothing to comment. Yeah, just finally, Matt Macy has gone out on loan. Does that mean? The club will look at bringing in another goalkeeper during during January. We are assessing the situation uh, with the three position on the goalkeeping area, and um, and we will find a different solution probably in this winter break. I read this morning that uh, Alex Runnison might move out on loan. Is there anything in that? There is nothing there yet. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. We'll go to Nick Callow from Haters, please. Morning, Mikel. Just when you Hello. said about Alex Runnison, nothing there yet. Is it something that's been discussed in the goalkeeping situation? We are assessing what is going to happen with the three positions and the discussion we had uh, in the summer uh, with the Ru and the club were a little bit different to what actually happened uh, because of the transfer window, because of the situation that developed uh, with Emmy at the end of the day. And uh, we didn't have much time to do what we really wanted to do. And, uh, and we decided to assess the situation now in this window, which is what we are trying to do. And we will make a decision here how we want to move forward in those three positions. OK, just a little bit looking ahead to this match against Palace and going up against Roy Hodgson. You're one of the youngest managers. He's 73, I think. He started managing in 1976. You weren't even born. Can you imagine or would you even like to be a manager for that many years? Well, if, if I could do that, that would be exceptional. And I think is the word that I would use to describe what Roy, Roy has done in the game um, and the way he's done it. Uh, I think his charisma, his personality and the, the way he approaches people, how he is as a, as a person and then what he has achieved as a coach. I think it's just exceptional. And in these days, uh, I've been doing that for a short period, but to do it, I just to imagine to do it for that long, it's, a, it's an incredible achievement. So my hat's off because uh, you should have something really special and really special people around you as well, I believe. Do you think it will be harder for modern managers like yourself to have such long careers because of the, the pressures, demands and the regularity of games, the press conferences? <laughs> Probably we will see. We will see what happens. Uh, I I heard a lot of coaches when they started. I only going to do that for five, six years maximum. It's been 15, 20 years, and they are still there. So it's a it's a difficult drug to take out of your system. I think, and once you are on it, you you want to carry on doing it. So you find already it's a very addictive job, are you? It is. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cheers. Thanks for your time, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. We'll now move on to embargo of 10.30 on Wednesday. Uh, Sam Dean.